terrorism and climate change are just a few of the difficult issues testing today's leaders. Regional and problems at home from migration, political polarization, proxy conflict, and radicalization are challenging traditional policy approaches, while new power centers emerge and disrupt traditional power dynamics. How should we live and govern our societies? Are the well-worn multilateral systems adaptable and relevant in the face of change? How will we grow new bonds of cooperation without destroying the old? Doha Forum presents a unique opportunity for policy and business leaders to come together and find solutions to these questions. Exploring areas of innovation, inclusive decision-making, and the role of global leadership under our vision of dialogue, diplomacy, and diversity. In 2019, we recognize the intensifying need of international collaboration, inviting leading policymakers from across the world. We have an opportunity to create real and lasting change in areas where the status quo is under incredible strain. Welcome to Doha Forum 2019, to an open platform for the exchange of ideas and to a city and country on the move. Let's tackle the world's complexity together. Doha Forum 2019, reimagining governance in a multipolar world. السيدات والسادة أرحب بكم جميعا في منتدى الدوحة المنصة التي أنشأناها منذ 19 عاما للحوار وتبادل الأفكار في تلك المرحلة بدأ الحديث عن مستقبل أفضل للبشرية بانتهاء نظام المعسكرين والحرب الباردة وأصبح بالإمكان الحديث عن أهداف الألفية وثلاثة أهداف التنمية المستدامة وبدا العالم مستشرفنا لمستقبله اكثر تفاعلا وكانت مفاهيم المجتمع الدولي والشرعيه الدوليه والمسؤوليه المشتركه والعمل المتعدد الاطراف هي الصاعده فاين نحن اليوم من كل هذا لقد مالت الدفه لصالح الرؤى المشككه باهميه المسؤوليه المشتركه والقانون الدولي كمرجعيه جامعه مما فسح المجال لفعل قانون القوة على الساحة الدولية بدلا من العمل على تعزيز قوة القانون. يجب البحث عن مواطأ الخلل التي جعلت الكثيرين يفقدون إيمانهم بنجاعة النظم والآليات الأممية القائمة، بما في ذلك ازدواجية المعايير. كما يجب تكثيف الجهود المخلصة في وضع تصورات جديدة للمرحلة القادمة، ولا سيما بعد أن بانت عواقب التخلي عن الشرعية والقانون الدوليين في أكثر من مكان بما في ذلك منطقتنا وهو الأمر الذي ركز عليه تغيير منتدى الدوحة لهذا العام تحت عنوان إعادة تخيل الحوكمة في عالم متعدد الأطراف ليس واضحا بعد إذا كان ما جرى منذ تلك المرحلة هو انتقال من أحادية القطب إلى تعدد الأطراف أم هو حالة من التشظي وتنصل الدول الكبرى من مهامها ومسؤولياتها؟ ولو كان الوضع مجرد تعدد الأقطاب، تعدد للأقطاب، لما كانت ثمة مشكلة، فتعدد الأقطاب لا يمنع التكامل في الأدوار، وقد يخلي العلاقات الدولية بزوايا نظر مختلفة، أما إذا ترجم إلى مجرد صراع على النقود بين محاور من دون مسؤوليات كونية متفق عليها ورضا لمصلحة العالم فإن ذلك يعد تراجعا حتى عن مرحلة القطبين حين تنافس تصوران عالم أفضل في ظل ردع المتبادل لقد تشوشت الرؤية الأممية المشتركة التي بدت واضحة في بداية الألفية الجديدة سواء من ناحية الشرعية الدولية وقضايا الفقر والبيئة والمناخ أم فيما يتعلق بمحاسبة مجرمي الحرب 
لكن المشكلات والتحديات بقيت هي نفسها ومشاكل البيئه والمناخ تتفاقم ولم تحل قضيه الفقر المزمن في مناطق شاسعه في العالم وكذلك قضايا الاحتلال وضم اراضي الغير بقوه وكما تعلمون تمت علاقه وطيده بين الفقر والحروب وتفاقم قضايا اللجوء والهجره كما استفادت ميليشيات المسلحه من صراعات المحاور وتعقدت عمليه محاسب مجرمي الحرب هذه هذه مشاكل لا يمكن حلها من دون جهود دوليه منسقه الوراء المشتركه ومثلها قضايا التطرف العنيف الذي لا يقتصر على دين او عرق كما لا يفرق استهدافه للأبرياء بناء على النوع أو العنصر أو الملة. لقد علينا على أنفسنا هنا في قطر أن لا نكتفي بنقد هذا الواقع وأن نحاول نسام في الإجابة على هذه الأسئلة. ولو جزئيا فبالإضافة إلى سياساتنا القائمة على احترام القانون الدولي والشرعية الدولية والإسهام في حل النزاعات السلمية عبر الوساطة وتوفير فضاء للحوار قمنا كذلك بإنشاء منصات مثل منتدى الدوحة ومؤتمر حوار مديان الذي أطلقناه منذ 16 عاما لبناء جسور الحوار. وشهدت الدوحة خلال هذه السنة فقط مؤتمرات دولية مهمة مثل لقاء الاتحاد البرلماني الدولي والمؤتمر الدولي للإعاقة والتنمية والذي أقيم الأسبوع الماضي بالتعاون مع الأمم المتحدة. أما على المستوى الإغاثي والتنموي فقد أعلنا على هامش انعقاد الجمعية العامة للأمم المتحدة في سبتمبر الماضي تخصيص مبلغ 100 مليون دولار للدول الجزرية الصغيرة لمواجهة تغير المناخ كما تعهدت دولة قطر بتعليم مليون مليون طفلا في مناطق النزاعات في حلول عام 2021 هذا بالإضافة إلى جهود المؤسسات الغيرية القطرية غير الربحية تعمل مؤسسة التعليم فوق الجميع وحدها على تعليم عشرة ملايين طفل في مناطق النزاعات حول العالم. وهذا جهد متواضع في عالم فيه حوالي 262 مليون طفل حول العالم خارج المؤسسات التعليمية. هذا بالإضافة إلى مناطق النزاعات التي فيها 27 مليون طفل محرومين من حقهم الأساسي في التعليم. ولكننا نقوم بدورنا. ويسهم صندوق قطر للتنميه سنويا بحوالي 600 مليون دولار لصالح مشروعات اغاثيه وتعليميه وصحيه في حوالي 59 دوله في جميع القارات. كما ان قطر الخيريه اسهمت بحوالي 400 مليون دولار لصالح مشروعات تنمويه استفادت منها حوالي 10 ملايين استفاد منها حوالي 10 ملايين انسان في 50 دوله. اما مؤسسه صلتك المعنية بالتمكين الاقتصادي للنساء والأطفال لا سيما في الشرق الأوسط وأفريقيا فقد مكنت حوالي 1.6 مليون طفل وامرأة حتى اليوم كما تستهدف المؤسسة تمكين 5.8 مليون طفل وامرأة بحلول 2022 لا شك أن هناك الكثير من التحديات الصعبة التي تواجه البشرية إلا أن هناك أيضا الكثير من الخير والعطاء والإخلاص والعزيمة والابتكار التي يمكن التعويل عليها لذا فإن علينا جميعا أن نحتفي بالخير والإنجازات الإنسانية أينما وجدت لهذا الغرض تحديدا يسرني اليوم أن نبدأ تقريبا جديدا في تكريم شخصية عالمية في هذا المنتدى تعد شخصية هذا العام مثالا يحتذى به في الحكم الرشيد فقد استطاع أن يحقق نقلة نوعية هائلة في الاقتصاد والتعليم والإنتاج في بلده كما أنه كافح ضد الطبقية الاجتماعية ليجعل التعليم والصحة حقا لجميع أبناء وطنه وتعزيز التعايش الديني والسلمي والسلم المجتمع فضلا عن مكافحة الفساد ووقوفه مع القضايا العادلة حول العالم والعزيمة التي لا تعترف بالزمن ولا بالعمر فنحن دون مبالغة نقف أمام شاب بكل ما يعنيه الطموح والإنجاز والمثابرة من معنى وإن تجاوز عمره التسعين ربيعا نحن نقف أمام شيخ بكل ما تعنيه الحكمة والبصيرة والصبر السيدات والسادة 
نكرم هذا العام الاخ العزيز معالي الدكتور مهاتير محمد رئيس وزراء ماليزيا على مجمل انجازاته وادعو الجميع ان يشاركوني في تحيته. the spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the State of Qatar, <coughs> Executive Director of Global Forum, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I wish to extend my heartiest congratulations to the State of Qatar for hosting this, 10, this 19th edition of the annual Doha Conference. I thank the state of Qatar for the warm hospitality accorded to me and my delegation, as well as the excellent arrangements made for this event. I am pleased to announce that I had a very fruitful meeting with His Highness, the Amir, during my official visit to the state of Qatar two days ago. Today, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with all of you at this Doha Forum 2019. I'm sure the presence of His Highness the Amir of Qatar will enable us to engage in fruitful political discourse and exchange of ideas. Furthermore, with the attendance of the leaders, heads of international organizations, non-governmental organizations, policy makers, think tanks, academics, journalists, and other influential individuals, we may also be able to find practical and action-oriented resolutions to solve global challenges as well as the pursuing our plans in achieving higher and better living standards for our people. I'm here to speak on matters relating to the theme of this year's Doha Forum, reimagining governance in a multipolar world. And I will speak from Malaysia's experience and perspective. Your Highness, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, just as this event signifies, it is important for all countries in the world today to work together and learn from each other on issues that could affect the way we approach the world. No country can live in isolation. For Malaysia, we are not seeking alignments. We need partners. We need friends. We are at a point in history where countries will need to have relationships across a broad spectrum. We have to accept the fact that we neither live in a unipolar world nor in a bipolar world. We live in a multipolar world in which there should be no hegemonic nation but interconnected relationship that go in multiple directions in, in multiple directions. In other words, 
it could be described as an integration of diversity and creativity among cultures, nations, and economies of the world. We must acknowledge the fact that isolationism is now impossible. Advances in communication have made us all next door neighbors with porous borders. There is even interconnected in interconnectedness between human societies which can fuel economic, social and political changes across the globe. We are seeing massive movements of people bringing with them not just differences in ethnicities but also language, culture and value system. Countries that still believe in hegemony will only create friction, tension and instability. Therefore, a multipolar world, would, world has to be combined with a greater integration among friends and partners as well as continued multilateral diplomacy in global in the global arena. The first place we look for friends and partners is at is of course our neighbors. We have a slogan in Malaysia which calls upon us to prosper thy neighbor. This is the antithesis of the <coughs> common saying beggar thy neighbor. Today's world is confronted with increased concern over the sustainability of global economic growth in the face of rising financial, political, social, and environmental challenges. In Southeast Asia, 10 countries decided to work as a, as a group. The next result, the net result is stability and prosperity. As one of the founders of the ASEAN Trophy, Malaysia continues to play a significant role in ASEAN's community building and regional integration. It has been the cornerstone of our foreign policy, despite its members, its members' diverse political, economic, and cultural fabrics. ASEAN has maintained peace and stability within the region for the past 52 years. We don't believe in applying sanctions to force countries to accept certain ideologies and to change governments. It is not only the particular country which will suffer, but all the trading partners also will suffer economically. There is no international law which permits this. It is totally unjust as only the powerful can take this action. The weak can only suffer. In a way, it is a form of dictatorship, a dictatorship that is worse than that in a country. It is international. Your Highness, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, trade war, like all wars, is primitive. And like all wars, it favors the strong against the weak. It is the choice of bullies. It is unworthy of our claim to be concerned about human rights and values. The people who suffer most are the poor people. They are the people to suffer from deprivation, from high costs, shortages, and the like. Conflicts over trade will occur, but their resolution must be through negotiation, arbitration, or through a court of law consented to by the countries concerned. In all conflicts, there must be a willingness to give up something in order to get something. Rigid stands will solve nothing. In order to get something, 
Rigid, in order to get something. Rigid stance will solve nothing. Even in a war, the end, in the end, someone must lose so the other can win. But termination of wars or conflicts through compromises will provide a win-win, lose-lose solution. This would be the red result whether the solution is through wars or peaceful means. The difference is that people will, have, will not be killed as in wars, but the winner will get something intact. Malaysia is deeply concerned with the current global economic situation, particularly the swing to the right in which national interest supersedes international well-being. Multilateralism is now being relegated to the rear. This is happening at a time when advances in communication has brought up all the nations of the world so close to each other. Globalization and a borderless world were invented in the developed countries. I suspect it is because they see huge potential for them to enjoy an unrestricted world market. There will be free competition between the countries of the world, but the countries of the world are not of equal development. The weak will obviously, obviously lose or gain less in a free for all market. Clearly, this multilateral globalized borderless world is not going to be good for the developing world, but there could be negotiations so that all the countries would gain something so that a multilateral world would not be detrimental to the economies of the developing countries. We have to remember that for many poor countries, import duty provides them with much of their revenue. Borderlessness, borderlessness means they will lose this home, this income. It is important that they be compensated in one way or another. But between developing countries, free trade can be more beneficial. It is important, therefore, that the developing countries adhere to multilateralism. Malaysia is a friendly country. We want to be friends with everyone and enemy of none, with one obvious exception. Our population is too small to provide a good market. We need the, world, the global market. There is no provision in the UN that allows one country to impose unilateral sanctions on another country. Unilateral sanctions create problems for other countries as well. Malaysia and many others lost a big market when the US sanction is applied against Iran. Malaysia does not support the reimposition of the unilateral sanction by the US against Iran. Such actions clearly violate the United Nations Charter and international laws. Sanctions can only be applied by the United Nations in accordance with the Charter. I wish to reiterate my I wish to reiterate my address at the United Nations General Assembly on this issue. If we want to have sanctions, let us have a law to govern sanctions. Your Highness Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, climate change is another issue that is posing a grave, grave, grave threat to food security, access to clean water, livelihoods, infrastructure, economic and sociocultural development gain. It is a real, it is of real concern to all of us. 
The global nature of this phenomenon requires a concerted and coordinated global response by all countries to address the current climate impact and to reduce future impacts of climate change. For Malaysia, we have already begun undertaking measures to reduce emissions and to deliver our part of the nationally determined contributions or NDCs. These are our efforts to prevent the devastating impact that climate change may bring, not just for us, but for our future generations. In closing, I would like to point out that this year's conference shows that the state of Qatar is on the right track in addressing pertinent issues that are happening in our world today. Events such as this, events such as this are fertile grounds for experts of various fields to impart knowledge, share best practices, and seek workable solutions that can be immediately implemented for the betterment of all. I have high hopes that this conference will be productive and fruitful for all of us. I thank you. In a career spanning more than 70 years, His Excellency Dr. Mahathir bin Mohammed has demonstrated how conviction, empathy, and a commitment to dialogue can be a model for global leadership. A fierce advocate for Malaysia, Dr. Mahathir has provided a steady vision for inclusion and development. Presiding over a period of rapid modernization, he has worked to transform the Malaysian economy and make the region among the most dynamic in the world. Dr. Mahathir's tenure has coincided with the emergence in Malaysia of strong governing systems, anti-corruption efforts, and robust civic engagement. Dr. Mahathir's style of diplomatic pragmatism is rooted in his experience of a deeply multicultural nation, allowing him to play a unique and important role in the post-colonial transition of Southeast Asia. For this, we recognize Dr. Mahathir bin Mohammed as the inaugural winner of the Doha Forum Award, celebrating our values of dialogue, diplomacy, and diversity. Thank you.